It's done. No more cheese for them. It's dwindling, I tell you. Hello there. Okay. So, are we going to start with Minecraft religions? I know a lot of you guys are here from Minecraft, because I advertised it. That's how it goes. In fact, I'm still on Minecraft. So, yeah. Could there be Neo Cheese? I need to write the religion for the nation I'm in. All right, Chelly Game. Chelly Game is. What religion are you in? Can I ask? Let me pull up the, the Rathnir wiki. Hey, Stony, have you gone to Sawcon? No! God damn it. God damn it. Why, why do I fall for that every single time? It infringes on my religion? I am Loki. I'm the one you report it to. Let's go. Alright. I asked a question. It's not the Golden War video, robot goalie man. <laughs> Girly man. Uh, okay. The Erosion Mystery Cults. Okay, okay. This is a pretty good place to start for... So, I don't know anything about the Erosian Mystery Cults. I don't know anything about the environment that you're in. I don't know about your society here. Let me look up Erosian to see if there's anything to read or do a little research on. I'm not going to... Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to, uh, uh, like, like tell you things to make your religion around. Just let's talk about cults and stuff. Because it's a mystery cult. So... When it's a when it's a very small religion, that's what you can consider consider a cult. People say that oh Christianity, the Catholic Church and stuff is a cult. They do rituals. They do religious things. A cult is necessarily small and not a lot of people know what's going on there. In the way that we use the term today. It was different back in ancient times. But Nowadays, usually there's some charismatic leader, they want some kinky shit, there's some isolation from the rest of society because that's how they keep you in their beliefs and they enforce their behaviors on you. That's not necessarily what has to be a cult, though. A cult can just be an association that you go to, like, weekly to do your religious services and get views on the world or worship a particular god like there was a cult of bacchus a cult of dionysus that kind of stuff um i'm only starting with cults and this because somebody else asked for that uh earlier um what I, one thing i really want to focus on religions a lot of them are around charismatic individuals like one of the, the biggest, most long-lasting religions in the Minecraft server is Soleanen, uh, of old Asharia. And that was started by Sieg, Zika Ost. And he was a charismatic leader. He called himself the Divine Emperor. Like, he kind of portrayed himself as that, so he became that to a lot of people. Aside from the other things that he became, because he's he's got a mixed legacy... Most followed religion on the server, uh, right now I think that's sacralism, theosism, theos sacralism. I think that's it right now. I think Soleanin is a very close second. The religion leader at this modern era is isolating its believers on the modern society, yet yeah, charismatic leader one. <laughs> yeah, ah, Sieg. Okay. Um, so yeah cults um a lot of cults one of them that was really early in rathnir was uh, abyss mysticism that cult was all about esoteric knowledge so the idea that that knowledge about like the fundamental fabric of the universe and i don't know too much about it i haven't read all of the books in minecraft but the abyss plays like like a huge role in I don't know, 
it's not like a spirit realm but it's where the universe exists in this minecraft religion and when you have esoteric knowledge like that in a religion a lot of times the knowledge itself is extremely important to the practice of the religion and i, I kind of want to bring it to this thing that i have right here so i think you can kind of break down religion into like a certain paradigm it's not perfect but it's a religion is no this isn't practice a lot of it is belief and practice belief and practice belief and practice and this thank you i have my loki hat on so i'm officially loki now i'm not jack i'm not stoneworks i'm loki how about technoblade he entitled to call himself the blood god does that count as a cult you know it could count as a cult if they actually start paying him revering him thinking he's a god it could actually be that way in real life i'm sure there are a bunch of youtube uh and content creators that will both try to like like take advantage of their audience and everything to get that i know dream has fucking disgusting what's going on over there um this will be uploaded after the live stream by the way i'll edit some stuff out so yeah um to get a really good basis of what a religion is because what is religion it's too many things religion's an umbrella term that mean like if somebody says i don't like homosexuality gay people shouldn't be married is that religion if they cite their religion as a reason why that is is that religion if somebody says i don't want to work on wednesday not necessarily because I go to church or I believe in the Sabbath, but my society believes in the Sabbath and it's normal for us not to work on, su or not Wednesday, Sunday. Is that religion? Kinda. I dislike dream fans because they're toxic and dream sends them to harass people. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Fighty Fish, your insular community in the obscure woods of Slovenia centered around him yourself is a cult well, i don't know what the thumbnail for this is mr kjv but i'm sure i'll, I'll look at it raiko shin i'm an atheist too but i'm like a, i'm a wishy-washy atheist i'm a i'm a bad atheist um so back to religion is like a thing in general it's a lot of things it makes up part of our worldview what we do how we relate to the people around us how we relate to the wider world and the things that we can't control how we comfort ourselves how we entertain ourselves not as much today religion is not an entertaining thing today but back then it it really was um and how we come together as a community i think i already said that um swing back and forth is it mayonnaise okay I don't know what I expected when I looked at when I look at chat. So, religion. The term as we use it today is really Protestant. I don't think the Catholics had any term for religion beforehand. Why would you need a term for it when you like you and your society generally wholehearted believes this is like the excuse me the true way of life you know other people don't have different religions they're just wrong <laughs> that's how a lot of societies perceive that kind of thing as long as they think of themselves as an identity within their religion and that's when you get into fake re the the fake worshipers and the the people who disagree with you within the religion but that's a whole nother story it's a protestant term but Protestants, as you might know, really like the belief aspect because like sola fide, only faith, and then the Bible, that's, that's the entire thing of Protestantism. So the term religion, as a lot of people here see it, and I see this reflected in the Minecraft server, and it's, it's very interesting to me. In, my, in Minecraft, a lot of people build their religions as the beliefs in gods, the order of the universe, that kind of thing. That's 
super cool and i'm glad people are doing that and they're writing these books and everything but religion has a whole other aspect and it's harder to do in minecraft because it's not a real community that has like holidays and 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 like communal um you don't have to interact communally with the people around you in minecraft a lot of people just stay by themselves or play with like a few friends right so in real life you have to be in your village and your town and your family there's no escaping that kind of thing um there's <laughs> a lot of different things so yeah belief represented in the minecraft religions practice not as much if you look at these notes that i have right here the two forms of practice, the two broadest forms of practice that I can identify are ritual and lifestyle. So, ritual is kind of easy to understand. Like, like you go to Catholic Mass, you do communion, that's a ritual. You go to the Aztecs, they kill a guy, cut his heart out, and throw him down the stairs, that's a ritual. Um, you go to a wedding. And there's a priest up there that says some words and then they make out and then suddenly they're different in the eyes of God. That's a ritual. You see what I mean? All of these things are communal. They bring everybody together and they have a certain way of doing things. Rituals are really good for making people feel emotionally invested in a religion. A, a ritual isn't it's you don't feel the same way in normal everyday life as you do in a ritual during a ritual if as long as you're not cracking jokes and things and and being socially inappropriate during it you should feel some sort of elevated like ooh this is sacred you know and if they have incense burning if they have music playing if they have everybody like in a big crowd and they're all participating, it's not hard to get a feeling of all of you coming together with this ritual. This is one thing that I think Soleyan and uh, that Sieg did really well. He was the first one to have a a serious ritual that that meant something, because he. I don't know if you guys know the backstory of Asharia, but he was like the head priest and the high divine king or whatever. And he got bored, basically, so he got all the Asharians to come to this place, do a ritual, and ascend to the afterlife, basically. And then the whole empire just collapsed. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing, in my opinion. Sounds like he committed a mass suicide, but still. When you do, when you do a ritual all together, it brings you together as a community. It heightens your emotions if you do it right, and I talk about that on my Patreon I don't know if I want to talk about that right now, though. If you guys are interested on, if interested in it, I will. Um, and you will usually engage in something that is otherwise not really engaged with in real life. So in Catholic Mass, there's the, the symbology of drinking the blood of God and eating his body. In Aztec ritual sacrifice... The government takes a person and straight up murders them in front of everybody because that's not something that normal people do, you know? So so a ritual, and this is kind of all over the place, rituals are important in religions, and I don't see very many in Minecraft. And I understand that. It's hard to, to come up with a ritual out of nowhere. Um, I think the the Solanin one was they got around they they built like a Stonehenge type thing then they went into the center with like a fire in the middle they read a couple poems that were from the church that somebody had written and then they killed something in the middle and then they all died themselves I think that's how it happened I don't really remember Yo, Catholic, let's go. All right, let me read some of these. In Eldam, ROT is a practice religion mostly. Let's go. Practice religions. That's what I'm talking about. Real gamers know what gompism is. I agree with that. I'm a gompist myself. Not in Minecraft, in real life. 
<laughs> we specifically exist to spread mycelium and fungus blocks. That's that's awesome. All right. Is listening to the king and queen consummate their marriage a ritual? It was a popular thing to do in medieval Europe. Bro. <laughs> that's an interesting question. If, if I were to go there and see how people reacted and how they did it i imagine it could be ritualized like maybe there's some guy who lays down like a carpet in front of the queen as she undresses and gets in the bed or some shit i don't know the specifics of 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 when the king and queen are boinking and the aristocrats in the castle are all listening to make sure that they consummate their marriage but i'm sure it could be ritualized it's definitely a social gathering that brings people together with some form of emotion. And it seems like it's a tradition, so why not? <laughs> I imagine people didn't think of it as a very godly part of this. So not a religious ritual, but sounds ritualistic. You're absolutely right, KJV. The term God is Western. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Especially not Abraham, they're just primitive fantasy stories. Wait, 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 wait. And other things, especially not. I see, I see. So from from Western Christians' perspective, other gods are just fantasy stories. Got you. I hope. One thing in particular, all religions seem to have in common some rules of life, helpful tips for society. Yes, so Sindri. Religions having helpful tips for life and society... That's what that's what I, I label as lifestyle. So Christianity has lifestyle as a code of ethics. And it it's not laid out entirely by Jesus, but Jesus does a lot of it in the Gospels. Basically saying, like, love thy neighbor, um, the golden rule, stuff like that, and his parables. The code of ethics in Christianity dictates whether or not you get into heaven or hell, that's the consequence of it. That's why you would want to listen to it. And that's how the lifestyle in Christianity seems to come about. In Judaism, there is a hard law code that both governs moral purity, ritualistic purity. Actually, I think it's just both those two. So moral purity or holy purity. If you do things like murder somebody or just an evil act like that, the idea is that that like kind of hurts god or it makes god turn on you so whatever evil befalls you or the land that you're on your people is due to you sinning because god's angry at you ritual purity that's stuff like if you haven't showered in a week or if you if you're if you're on your period that's one of them or if you just had a baby you can't when you're ritually impure you can't go to the temple and you can't partake in rituals and sacrifices um i think i got off off topic <laughs> but um these law codes in judaism and also islam are how the lifestyle is encoded into that religion islam's sharia law and i mean it's not just sharia law but there's a, a huge um uh, uh, body of law and ethics surrounding Islam and the Quran and that it has been pretty strictly adhered to uh, at least recently and within the uh, Islamic political societies um, so something that if, if you're making a code of ethics or like a law for your religions for your religious uh, uh, people to follow you need to either frame it like a law given by God or as like a code of ethics with some like use for it. Um, Buddhism has basically, if you follow the, the eightfold path, the lifestyle that's ideal to Buddhism, you will reach nirvana and you will escape the cycle of suffering, which is being reborn over and over again because life is suffering. And boy, I can relate to that. 
as I drank cold coffee out of a plastic goblet. So the idea, religions are always going to want you to live well by their own society standards. And there's going to be reasons that they give you to do that. In Christianity, it's if you live well, Jesus loves you and you go to heaven. If you don't, you go to hell forever and you're tortured there. That's a, that's a pretty strong reason to to want to do good by the Christian standards, so long as you believe that. In Judaism, if you do bad, God's going to hurt you or hurt your descendants. He's going to make the land that you live on infertile, and it's not going to go well for you. Somebody else is going to come conquer your land. That's part of the historical trends of Israel, so like it makes sense that it would be like that. Islam I'm not too familiar with. I think they also have a concept of heaven and hell, but I don't know i don't know i'll look it up um but i think also that if you do bad god's gonna not harm you but give you what you deserve is the the is also a thing in islam in buddhism you want to do good by the eightfold path by the buddha standards basically replicating the the buddhas that came after buddha and you'll escape the cycle of suffering. Stony, stop staring into my soul. I know you, Trev. You just want to make a another Ligma-like joke. I know you. Okay, okay. What is your opinion? Ooh. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm way behind. Christianity is the son of Judaism. You could say that. It's, it's a... Not a strange way of putting it. That's definitely how the Christians have put it. What is your opinion? The most interesting religion mythology. I don't mean believably or something like that. I really like Aztec stuff just because it's cool. Oh, and Mayan. I read the Popol Vu and I thought it was really, really cool. Um, but like, I don't know too much about it. I it, Every mythology has a bunch of cool stories. It just, I think it depends on how cool you find the society that it's in. Uh, Chinese mythology is also really cool, and it's also blended with historical um, fact stories. But it's, it's just too much to understand <laughs> in China. Okay, what are your thoughts on the idea of a ritual involving blood sacrifice to note the start of the campaigning season? That makes sense. That makes sense. A blood sacrifice is like, all right, we're going to war. Here you go, war god. Um, the only thing is that... Uh, a blood sacrifice to soldiers is not going to be super weird because they're killing people all the time. And and let me back up a little bit. With a ritual, at like the peak of the ritual, at the climax of it, because it, you want to play it out kind of like a story. At the climax of your ritual, you need to have something strange, weird, like I said earlier, drinking the blood of God. That's a little cannibalism -y. And Christians don't like cannibalism. You know, they don't like human sacrifice. And, and that's the idea behind the, the uh, you know, the consumption. Um, so having a taboo with your ritual important for getting people to that elevated headspace because like oh this, is, this isn't different i'm interacting with something that i don't interact with normally you know you don't think that but that's what your brain kind of does um and that's what kind of brings it to a sacred feeling so if soldiers were to do a human sacrifice that wouldn't be too out of the ordinary for them you could do a human sacrifice but it might be it might be worth doing it in a different way that soldiers would normally do it. So don't have them chop up a dude with swords because that's what they do for their day job. Maybe burn them alive. Maybe poison them and have things drink out the poison. Something that something that's disturbing. If they can like like flip it around onto somebody else or something else, that'll make the ritual much more like, ooh, it'll have an impact. You know what I'm saying? The Stoneworks cult ritual. We must watch Stoneworks videos and wear funny hats. Uh, that's already well underway. Uh, I'm actually a follower myself. <laughs> a lot of Lux stuff in modded seems pretty deep. I wonder how they will be. 
Lux seems like it can be wherever it needs to be, and that's really cool. BBC's Merlin has the old religion. The old religion? Druidism? Question mark? We exist to smoke weed. I agree with that. All right, all right, all right. I do not think that God is inherently Abrahamic. Okay, this is an interesting one. I just had a discussion about what God means. Anyways, there there are a lot of societies that have a, a conception of the oneness of everything. Um, Yoruba society, Indian society. I read about one Mongolian shamanistic society, the Abrahamic societies. The oneness, the oneness of everything that's like the highest you can get to what god is so it's hard to draw a line between what is the difference between the christian god the jewish god the islamic god the idea of indian brahma where everything is a single spirit with emanations in it you know if it's if everything's a single spirit would you call that god it's not anthropomorphic it doesn't interact in the same way as a christian god does it's hard to define if god is a an abrahamic cultural thing because the word god is i'm using it is an abrahamic cultural thing it depends on how much you want to separate it from that in japanese is referred to kamisama which literally means god this is an interesting one because kami i've I've seen kind of mean something like force or like presence. If somebody can translate, that would be really cool. Um, let me look it up. But kami aren't necessarily gods. They are just... Here we go. They are just forces, things in nature, um, powers like that. They can be historical. Um, they can be actual people. They can be things like the moon. They can be the embodiment of the moon. Kami are really diverse. It's hard to call them gods. Um, this is basically the uh, the native religion of Japan before Buddhism arrived through China. But yeah, like like I think it's Hashiman, who was the historical emperor who became a kami that people worship. Um, there's also the kami of Mount Fuji. It's just things connected to whatever it seems like there's a spirit of. Even, like, fictional characters have kami. Okay. Would a religion Rastafarian is allowed because one of their rituals is smoking weed? Well, like, allowed by who? <laughs> the U.S. government? Hell no. Um, I don't know anything about Rastafarianism. I'm quite misinformed. I, I think... But I imagine the weed smoking aspect of it is overblown, but I have no idea. I am English. I can confirm. It's sort of scary being grunts. Okay. I should actually read these out. We call our gods the Bathala. Huh. wonder what Bathala means, if I'm saying that right. Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to the present. I'm skipping over a lot of things. Sorry. All right. Here's one. The distinction IMO of Abrahamic God and other God, I imagine, is where the line is drawn between each culture's one God and main mundane existence. On one hand, you have everything is God, and then you have the idea of a separate creator. That makes sense. Christianity, I, I think they kind of pay lip service to the idea that everything is God, but I don't think they actually like work with that. Because mundane existence is... It's mundane. <laughs> I don't think people see God in this desk or this candle or anything, but they, a lot of people say that God is everywhere, a lot of Christians at least. Um, how I informed there are two definitions of mythology and the difference to religion. Mythology is just not Christian Abrahamic religion. Uh, Spoken Claw, I hate to break it to you, but Christianity has a lot of mythology behind it. Judaism has a lot of mythology behind it. Um, I'm going to get into some pretty dangerous territory here, but Jesus is a legendary figure. Like, he was he was written about about 
40, 50 years after he traditionally is said to have existed as a person. And there's no doubt that the people who wrote about him wrote about him in different ways than he may have actually existed because they wrote about him very differently from place to place. Some people hold Jesus was Gnostic. The four Gospels have similarities between them, but also big differences in how they portray Jesus. Other people just thought Jesus was a, a, a whack job. Um, <laughs> so mythology is not necessarily falsehood. It's a story that develops around something, you know? And I mean, if you, the Adam and Eve story, that's straight mythology. They don't know how the world was created. This was just their idea of how the world was created. There's a, there's a, a, a point, there's many points to be made in that story that one God made everything. He's kind of, he made people in his image. He made, he didn't make suffering, but he allowed humans to choose suffering, that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful story, but if you still believe it nowadays, I think something's up with you. Involved the consumption of peyote or ayahuasca. Yes. Mm. That's, uh, only these pl groups are legally allowed to consume these plants. Right. So, I think I'm right in saying they use the, okay, so ind indigenous groups often use peyote or ayahuasca in religious ceremonies. That's perfect because these are, they're called uh, entheogens. They pretty much instantly create a, an elevated feeling of emotion or like connectedness with the universe. It's a different state of mind. And that's something that's special, special about a ritual. And using these in a ritual is super powerful. So like, maybe that's why they use wine in Catholicism. I have no idea. But it's a it's a perfect thing to frame a religious ritual around because it kind of instantly gets to the heart of we're gonna all feel something totally different to everyday consensus reality together you know and when you mix it with the cultural symbolism that people attribute to it whatever songs they do whatever dances they do whatever um i'll say prayers they do to kind of ward away spirits that all connects it very tightly with the divine aspect of the religion. Okay. Okay, people are talking about Rastafarianism there. Yes, that's good, because I don't know anything about Rastafarianism. How do you think what evil means in the religions you create? I think every religion has kind of a similar idea of evil they have they have a similar idea of evil in everyday real life don't murder people don't steal from people don't be an asshole to people like 10 the good 10 commandments wrapped up in there another form of evil that is born out of religions is when people are not our religion that can be seen as very evil i mean like the inquisition the people who did the inquisition thought they were justified by other people not being their religion and therefore evil you know so and it makes sense that multiple religions will have this because if you create this social pressure to not become an apostate of your own religion that religion will be tighter and it'll grow more and there will be more people that don't leave the religion you know but it's still kind of messed up. It's still kind of messed up. I've got a I've got a great fascination and everything with religion. It's very cool. I like stories. I like characters. All that kind of stuff. There's some screwed up stuff in there. <laughs> is Tao a religion? I'd say Tao is a religion. They have an idea about the order of the universe. Okay, so Taoism is a Chinese philosophy that is very naturalistic. It's very much kind of go with the flow. There's also a mythology behind it, and there's beliefs about the afterlife. The yin-yang comes from that, like balance and contradiction and how they're all together. 
just because it doesn't have a god or that's a separate issue that's kind of a separate if you issue if they have a god because people that are like traditional chinese religions often are like taoist and they worship ancestor spirits or other gods or you know that kind of thing it's not exclusive over there but Tao itself does not necessarily have a god. It has a thing called the Tao, which is kind of the thing that underpins all of life, and it's the perfect way to live and lifestyle. Underpins all the way of life. Belief? And they do ritual practice? Yeah, I'd consider it a religion. Solanian rituals use fire, water, and lilies. It represents Solaris, Silene, and the spiritual magics almost. I'm very surprised that somebody who isn't Sieg could say that. So thank you, CLM Duke Soul Eater. Because I couldn't tell you anything about Solanin. I only know who the gods there are. Mythology plus philosophy slash cultural ambivalence life concepts equals religion. Yeah, but you're also missing ritual and lifestyle. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like mythology is I, I think it's a part. It's a it's a big part of religion. The stories that that justify the world in the way it is. These lights are so annoying. <laughs> OK, OK, OK. You see, evil is part of you see, evil is part of the really in play its role. Yeah, Tao equals Taoism. It's the same thing. It, Chinese written in Latin script is annoying. OK. Um, let me talk a little bit about mythology. I'm sh I am certain that you guys, y'all know what mythology is. It's those weird stories that don't make any sense to a modern reading audience. Um, I'd say there's, there's three variations of mytholo mythology that you should know. One are just made up stories, pure mythology. Like if you're thinking of, a uh, uh, Thor, when he goes fishing with his, with his, uh, with his giant buddy and they pull up Jormungandr when he puts a cow's head on the fish hook and then he fights Jormungandr and then he like accidentally lets him go and the world isn't destroyed accidentally that's pure mythology there's a point to that story i couldn't tell you the point of that story but there there are points that deal with cultural issues like the end of the world being buddies with your antagonists because thor and the giant are antagonists and they also fight a little bit but they're also good friends um but these are just stories that kind of tell how things are thematically they're not real at all though then you get things like legends which are things that kind of happened they kind of happened but over the years they've been uh expanded they've been exaggerated so think about the Trojan War. Archaeology says it was a real thing. But you look at Homer, and it's super detailed. There's a bunch of gods in there, and there's characters who have awesome story arcs. And, you know, it's exciting. It's entertaining. That's a legend. It's probably not true that the Iliad and the Odyssey happened exactly the way they're written down they were remembered as better stories over time because better stories will attach themselves to an audience more and then spread better. Especially when it's an oral tradition, which, remember, the Iliad and the Odyssey were carried on as oral traditions after the Trojan War. So these are legends. And it's a big thing um, that at the turn of the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, probably like 7th century BCE to like fourth century bce that's when a lot of the legends in world history when like in kind of western history western middle eastern indian too and chinese with confucius actually a lot of important foundational characters come around and at first these guys people like confucius alexander the great um socrates uh the buddha these people they they come around and they teach people things they're charismatic they do certain things and then over time after they die their students remember them through stories through lessons through 
um, representations of them, but people keep adding on to these things within the same school of thought. So this kind of collection of stories and ideas and different images of the same person come around that didn't necessarily happen. They might be exaggerations. That's what a legend is. And then after that, you get straight history. Alexander the Great is an interesting example where legend and history blur each other because in the Middle Ages, there would be, there was a, uh, people would see Alexander the Great as kind of a superhero. Like there's a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of books where he basically goes on adventures. Like at one point, and I read one called the Greek Alexander Romance. He goes like deep sea diving in a bell. Then he crosses over into a land of just pure darkness. Then he meets the Amazons and like, I don't think he fights them. Um, but then he goes to heaven and talks to giant talking fish. These aren't things that actually happened in, <laughs> in real life. People just made Alexander the Great into a legend. Legends are a big part of religion. Huge part of religion. Moses, probably a legendary figure. Although he was written about a thousand years after he would have actually like lived so pretty big legend there jesus christ lived what he supposedly died in 30 a.d and the first writing about him is in the is in 50 a.d and that's pretty scarce writing the gospels were written in like 70 a.d maybe a bit later but within those 20 40 years a lot of legendary like like adding on details happens and i'm not saying that the gospels are wrong or anything it's just how the person gets remembered they were an extraordinary individual and the schools of thought that wanted to keep their memory alive wanted to portray certain things about them to back up their own worldview that's what legendary that's what legendary uh uh figures are like in religion Okay. Religion in East Asia is a complex pseudo is a contemporary pseudoscience, a very fluid mix of ideas, some from folk tradition, some from different philosophies, and some from modern science. That's very interesting. Calling it a pseudoscience is I think it's strange because I don't think any religion is really a science. I think it's more of a tradition. I think some of the wisdom that comes around is kind of scientific, but I, I do see your point, though. A note on Shintoism. Kami are spirits known as kami purely because people worship them. Yokai can also be kami, can also be kami if worshipped. I see. I don't really know what a yokai is. Is that like a... Is that like something... Is that like an idea? Something in the past? A latent dormant spirit? Unsure. But these are all really cool ideas of your world building a religion. Okay, I don't think religion in East Asia... Okay, okay, that's that's a counter-argument. In Soleanin, when you go to the Luminarium... Oh, wait. I was going to talk about mythology, and then I didn't do that. Let me, let me go back there. So that's the three. Mythology, legendary figures, and then his, history. History is also kind of mythologized. I mean, think about George Washington chopping down the cherry tree. That's him becoming a little bit of a legend. It's a stupid legend. Like American folklore is dumb. <laughs> but it's still it's still something that kind of portrays them in a certain light. You see what I mean? Hold on, do I still got? Nope, that's my that's the live stream. Um so those are the three things. Now mythology. One, they're going to be entertaining stories. Nobody's going to sit around and listen to you tell stupid stories about what the gods are doing if they're not entertaining. No one's going to remember them and nobody's going to pass them on. But they also justify a lot of things in reality, basically, or how your culture, culture works. So if mythology isn't used as mythology, if people treat it like real history, and oftentimes they would because that's their perception of the world. The gods did a lot of things to create the world. They were genuinely involved in it um so for one example zeus there's one story where zeus bangs like a young boy 
and the Greeks did that too. I'm sure several of you know that, especially from history memes. But a story like that, a story of Zeus taking a young boy and banging him, would basically give the Greeks permission to do that themselves. There's also the idea that um, Prometheus tricked Zeus into taking a good-looking but not like nutritious hunk of fat instead of the best meat that comes from the cows. That way, when the Greeks did a ritualistic sacrifice, they didn't have to give up the best meat. They just had to burn some of the fat, some of the useless stuff. And the story with Prometheus doing that and then getting punished for eternity. Thank God those lights are down, bro. I, I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. Zeus taking that and getting and getting Prometheus punished for eternity was a justification for that cultural aspect of the Greeks' lives. So, like, if I were to do that about my life, if I were to embed something in mythology, what would it be? Like, I try to work out every day now. I would probably make a, a mythology where some of the gods are working out, and then they get disrupted, and then they get really mad and get into a big fight, and because they were working out, the gods win. That would be a good... <laughs> One, stupid. Two, it justifies working out. And if I wanted my uh, society to be really buff and fit and sexy, then, yeah, I might have that as part of the religion if it catches on. Okay. Mythology also shows the gods and the gods' nature, particularly their personalities. That's a big thing. The gods are characters in these stories, they have personalities and certain traits alongside them. How would a religion where the god actually exists actually work? Good question. So I'm, I'm going to interpret that to mean the god is, like, you can see the god. Everyone knows the god is real. If there are no other gods, it would be easy for the god to do whatever they want. At that, at that point... If the god has the power that we usually give to gods, the characters, then humans can't do anything. It's like the gods are now the main characters of your world building, you know? And it, it's kind of all about them, unless, they're, unless the humans have certain vehicles of holding them back. Uh, the Elder Scrolls does this well, where the gods are in conflict and the humans are kind of the, the, the center of that conflict. So they get certain things from each of the gods to be on their side okay in paganism gods aren't really separated from nature forces they're associated nordic people referred to the state of fury as wotan and greeks have used dionysus to refer to madness that is right that is right to delpy however i think the the association of nature with the gods is is a bit overrepresented in um modern portrayals of paganism um in norse mythology actually in a lot of mythologies in most of the polytheistic mythologies that i've found the polytheistic religions the gods are not the god of water the god of the sun the god of the moon they're not that the gods are more personalities they have more depth to them they have they, they do certain things you know like i have written here zeus is an oath keeper he is the one that you talk to when you're making an oath and if you don't keep that oath he's gonna smite you for it because zeus likes people to keep their promises the gods are like people in how they and how they come about and how they're portrayed by the pagans themselves they're not like like it's really telling that zeus poseidon and hades already exist and already did a bunch of stuff like they overthrew the titans before they got their nature associations they literally draw lots for them although there there is more significance to zeus being a sky god because he's the supreme one in the pantheon and poseidon and hades being a little bit less but still really powerful um 
I just want to say nature associations are not everything that gods are. It's very easy to say this is the god of the sun, this is the god of the night, this is the god of the like daytime sky, horses, the ocean, whatever. Gods should be characters first and foremost, in my opinion. And any associations with those nature things might be like how they use their powers, you know? Um, Thor is a lightning thunder god. I mean, his name is etymologically tied to thunder. But he's also like just the biggest embodiment of strength and pride that lives in the Norse mythos, you know? And when he uses lightning, it's not like he gets offended if people like put rubber around themselves to not get struck by lightning, you know? He just uses lightning with Mjolnir. You know what I mean? Nature associations are important and they're very interesting for how you portray the gods. They're not the gods themselves. They definitely invoke that there should be a god of them because thunder and lightning is dope. Volcanoes are dope. Storms are dope. They're awe-inspiring. And they can be scary. But those aren't the gods themselves. The gods are, again, characters, personalities. But what if you wanted something completely original? Join my religion. In most religions, gods are mighty characters, and there is not like one god of fertility or war. Right, exactly. Excuse me. Gods also have a usually a bunch of different associations, like Poseidon is the god of the ocean, uh, horses, earthquakes, cyclopses. <laughs> it's very strange. Zeus, Hades, and Poseidon were the same god to the ancient uh, Mycenaeans. Huh. I'll have to look that one up. That's dope. What are your thoughts on the mythology of the Yggdrasil, Yggdrasil tree and the creatures that live in it? I don't know much about the Yggdrasil tree. Um, I think it's an interesting idea that there that the Axis Mundi is a tree. Like, it makes sense for the Norse. Because what, what other tall pole things do they have to center the universe around? Um, but I think it's it's also just imagination. Like, when when a society comes up with that, I think the only reason to come up with stuff like that is to put all of the supernatural things that have already been come up with into, like, one cohesive axis mundi, where the realms are around, you know? Um, things like Valhalla, Midgard, Dwarfgard, I forget the names for these, they, realms are an interesting thing. I don't know much about the, about realms. I was thinking about doing a video of them, but I really can't tell you much about different realms now. Thank you, Idiot Red. I do hope to be a vibe. Being here is a vibe right now. Also, I hope you guys can hear the music, because I cannot. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's talk more to the chat. I love learning about Stoneworks, even though I can't play on it because I use a Switch to play Minecraft. Stoneworks Switch coming soon. No, I wish I could say that. I can't. I find it fascinating how Aphrodite came from Astarte. I also think it's a great idea for of creating religions. <laughs> What makes cultures separate their gods' personalities like in Abrahamic religions? God is benevolent, while Greek mythology, they are rather petty and sumer. They were vengeful. A little bit has to do with geography. I can tell you why Sumer was vengeful, because they would get random floods all the time. There was, like, no reason or warning for it. Sometimes it'd be seasonal. What are you going to think if that happens? The gods are vengeful, you know? Um... I wouldn't necessarily call the Abrahamic God benevolent, <laughs> not to the not to humans, at least in the Old Testament and the Jew in Judaism. Um, but because the Abrahamic God is is a is one thing and it's the source of all righteousness to these societies, then like it, it has to be benevolent. So so you're right, you're right. I'm I'm kind of splitting hairs here, but. Um, I don't actually know what 
separates a culture's idea of their god's personalities though um it's very clear that cultures see their gods as having different personalities um some cultures see the gods as like distant and far away and like they don't really interact and they might have people or like angels not angels spirits be the more uh real supernatural force to people some people have their gods be like like literally there's a god of the house and it controls what happens inside of the house and you know you can't you can't canonize what the personalities of those gods are but i think it has a lot to do with that how you organize your gods if you have one god and you want to appease him all the time i think you'll be seen as benevolent okay <laughs> there were some non-answers to that some people have made theories of, that the god of the old testament and the new testament are different gods yeah that's called gnosticism and the christians hated that shit for hundreds of years thank you dexter og i uh i don't stream often <laughs> what do you think would happen if there was a cross world war would happen between eldam and rathnir well rathnir would kick their ass right now just saying if they if Rathnir actually came up, like Catholic, he's angry whilst New Testament is forgiving. Yeah, yeah. The Old Testament, I wouldn't say he's angry. He's harsh. God of the Old Testament is very harsh. Um. But it's it gives its own internal justification for these things. Literally, like the entire Torah. And like a lot of the prophets, literally, so much of it is just do what God is telling us to do. And you know, that's kind of, that's something that the temple would want to write in, in their book because they want everybody to listen to them. But when they don't do that, they can attribute bad things that happen to Israel to the fact that they're not listening to God. And uh, a lot of bad things happened to Israel. Hope you guys like, hope you guys like ASMR. What I'd use as like where gods come from and what they are is they are the spirits of things who've reached extreme levels of power. I've heard of that before, Epic Gamer. Um, that way it's possible for people to become gods. The only thing is you need to quantify how, how somebody gets power. There could be a few ways to do that. Let's actually talk a little bit. Let's talk about important members because it, it kind of deals with that. So important members of, of a religion so even 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 founding members so jesus buddha muhammad but also people after that like uh like uh, uh saint peter or i forget the the student of buddha guess i'm not as well versed as i thought um so authority to these important figures in a religion and this is kind of the other way around it's not like they become gods but they're remembered as like godly important divine the they will have stories surrounding them because that's a good way to retain information about who a person is what they believe what they would do in certain circumstances also stories are they can be awesome like the rule of awesome i have that written here oh you guys can't even see that very well can you let me change let me change the streams layout There we go. That's a bit better. Cool. Sorry about that. Um, the rule of awesome. The idea that God came down as a human and was murdered gruesomely and then came back to life and ascended to heaven is a pretty dope story. You know? Like, you can think the Bible and Jesus is lame and everything and that Christianity is, is old hat because, yeah, it's the establishment thing. But that's a cool story. Like, no wonder it resonated with people, especially when they threw so much into Jesus ideologically. Like, you know, Christian beliefs. Um, Muhammad. The idea that this one guy 
was sitting in a cave and then an angel comes down and starts talking to him and then he becomes a leader of his tribe and conquers all of the arabian peninsula with god's intervention and god's advice and god's help is a pretty awesome story the moses story coming out of egypt awesome story the popol vuh two twins go down into the underworld to play a ball game against a bunch against a bunch of dudes who killed their fathers then they get killed and come back to life and then kill the underworld gods awesome story if they're important members of your religion it's a good idea to have bad things happen to them or trials happen to them in a form of a story um baha'i ullah nope Oh, something's wrong with my with the stream. Don't know what it is. Please let me know if something's wrong on your end. But yeah. And when somebody founds a religion, they're always going to be hated by somebody else for having their new ideas, preaching other things, saying that they're more godly than other people. <laughs> That's a big one. So they're always going to be kicked out of places, killed. They're going to... Um, did anything happen to the Buddha? I think he got the Buddha got into a bunch of arguments, but the scriptures there say that he won basically every single one. Um, Confucius got kicked out a few times. So that kind of stuff, you know. Fix Rathnir. No. Uh, so then within these stories, for important members of a religion, authority can come from their powers, like how Jesus goes around healing people, um, how Moses can open the red sea for everybody their knowledge that's a big one especially for esoteric religions like if you look at the book of john john portrays jesus as just actually that's more about the people um buddhism buddhism is all about the knowledge that buddha attained when he was meditating under a tree that's a pretty iconic scene um and the idea is that the teachings that he gives can help you to reach enlightenment. And if you follow the teachings correctly, you will become enlightened as well and serve the purpose of the whole religion to reach nirvana through knowledge. So that's how the Buddha got his authority to be an important founding member of a big religion. Excuse me. Revelation, also huge. Think of the prophets of the Old Testament, how they could see God coming down, hear his voice. Um, Muhammad literally listened to the angel uh, uh, Jibrael and Jibrail, <laughs> and he spread on what the angel would say to him in Arabic. That's what Islamic tradition holds. And political power, that's a big one. I think, I think Islam also spread a lot through political power. You know, because they conquered a bunch of places. The Rashidun, Umayyad, and then Abbasid Caliphates. Damn, that's some, that's, some, that's some good world building right there, honestly. Favorite medieval kingdom. Oh, wait, yeah, let me finish this first. And lastly, to found a new religion or be a big thinker as a new in a new school of thought in a religion, you got to be charismatic. You got to get people to want to follow you around. You gotta get people to wanna to listen to what you have to say. You gotta be convincing. Your points have to make sense. And if you're speaking a new language with a new idea, you gotta use the language that they already know. Christianity did a lot of that. That's what Paul did. Um, or you gotta have some new popular idea. Jesus, all about the new popular idea. I don't really wanna to go too deep into it, but if you read some of the earliest sources on Jesus, so it's quite different than what a lot of the later sources that make up the Bible have to say. What are things that are needed for a full-fledged religion? Everything that is in this live stream right now. <laughs> okay. Is it about religion and politics? What do you think? And dealing with it when creating a story? <laughs> I'm not sure if that is to me or someone else. If some scientists simulated a virtual world, would they be the god of that world? If they could control what happens in the world, I'd say yes. It'd be a strange, strange god to have. But I've thought about that. That means god is not...
perfect. He doesn't know everything. He just made something inconceivably massive. That's the only thing that simulation theory could tell us about God, if it's true. <laughs> I don't care what anyone has to say. Metatron is a dope name for an angel. Metatron. It sounds too robotic to me. If it were a robotic angel with like guns and shit and like metal wings, that'd be dope to me. But I respect your I respect your opinion. Uh, favorite medieval kingdom, any era. Norman Kingdom of Sicily. It's super cool. I just did a big ass paper on it. Norman Kingdom of Sicily. <laughs> Metatron was the original canon name for whichever angel in the Bible. Okay. Um Oh yeah, one thing that the gods do that's really important is that they ensure the justice of the society so like i said earlier zeus keeps oaths so you swear an oath you swear it on zeus say by zeus i will keep this oath and then if you don't keep that oath zeus is supposedly going to come in and wreck your shit because you deserve it you broke your oath that also goes for the values of a society like evangelical christians think that homosexuality and masturbation is going to bring hurricanes sometimes so you know, same kind of thing. Every society has this. When when they don't understand the larger forces of society, of nature, then they will attribute bad things or good things that happen to the religiosity and the following of their tradition, of that god. See what I'm saying? The gods want to be the gods want to be appeased. They want you to do right by them. If you don't, you're screwed. They're going to do bad things to you. I, th I think us scientifically literate people know that that's not really how it works in society, though. Bad things happen out of incompetence and random chance. Okay, is your religion poly or monotheistic? I don't know. My religion is pantheistic. How about that? <laughs> My sims oaths are kept, so does that make me the evil god? Okay, I don't know about you, Mr. Alex Wilson, but when I play Sims, I'm an evil god. I'm an I'm evil. I'm terrible. I trap my Sims in a bunch of washing machines, and then I light the house on fire. At least they're clean afterwards. Okay. Blech. Monotheism is a strange way for a religion to be organized, isn't it? The idea that one god, one everything happens. I've had this, I've been toying with this idea for a while, but I have no evidence for it. It's just kind of a, a hypothesis, but it, the gods are kind of like atoms, but in the other way, you keep cutting stuff down and you keep cutting it in half and you keep cutting it in half until you get an atom, atom, you can't divide, you can't split it. Well, you can, but they didn't know that back then. <laughs> um, I think... So, so cutting something down till it's small enough where you can only have one indivisible piece. That's the same thing if you go larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. You get the whole of existence. And you get one god. See what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to go from polytheism to monotheism. But by this logic, it doesn't seem easy to go from mon monotheism to polytheism. Unless... The polytheistic gods are like a manifestation of the one everything. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. You're a smart, sexy bunch. Please don't convert to stonyism. You may worship the Minecraft gods, and I will be a messenger between you and them. I have them in a group chat. They actually Snapchat me pictures of their nipples. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, my Minecraft villagers are treated way worse than my Sims. Same. <laughs> what about adamantism, where you have to not wear armor and only use stone tools? 
not wearing armor and only using stone tools is a good way for your society to get overrun by better equipped people. I'm just going to leave you with that. If you're if you're not a warrior class and the warrior class isn't expected to follow this religion, that's chill. That's super chill. But uh the Amish of your world, it's not going to do super well when an invading conquering force comes in. Monotheistic Judaism originated from a series of kings who wanted to make the god of kings more influential and thus the king more influential and slowly subside the pools. Okay. Epic Gamer. So, so the, the ancient Middle East was organized in a very specific way. It's called a temple state. Ancient Egypt had a version of this. Mesopotamia had a version of this. And it existed in the Levant up until... Depends on how you want to count it, but I would consider up until the Romans destroyed the second Jewish temple. So it would be organized as the king has political and diplomatic power. They have power of the army, all that kind of stuff. They get to take people's money. They get to tax people. They get to live in luxury. Kingly stuff. They do king stuff. The temple is the cultural authority of the place. They have the nation's god. They have the right, or the scribes are kind of a different story, but they're involved with the temple. They have the writing. They have celebrations, festivals. They have, um, they'd keep a lot of loot in there, a lot of the art. Um, both of them were very important, polit uh, uh, powerful figures in society, but they were not like, they were sometimes in cahoots, sometimes not. King Josiah of the Old Testament is a good example of them being in cahoots and because he supposedly had uh the book of Deuteron deuteronomy written so yes there is definitely influence over it but i wouldn't say monotheism Juda judaistic monotheism came from that i personally think that this monotheism one would have been um influenced by zoroastrianism because they were uh, uh, exiled to Babylon, which was then invaded by the Persians who let them go back. And there would have been a lot of cultural exchange between these peoples. There was also a couple like, like small scale in instances of monotheism popping up in Egypt with Akhenaten and um, I forget what it's called. It starts with an M, but it's right to the south of Israel. And it said that Moses goes there to, and he learns about, that's where the burning bush is um, in the Old Testament. So, so I wouldn't say, I don't know the historicity of um, monotheism emerging there, but Judaistic monotheism was not the first monotheism. Um, it is the first really big monotheism. I mean, Zoroastrianism is still around. It's questionable if that's monotheistic, but... You, you know um but yeah like really good point the kings in the temple definitely had a lot of influence over each other but they were still quite separate so real quick stones how would one's morals kind of mixed with said religion like an example is some christians believe you shouldn't avoid shouldn't avoid sin as it would be disrespectful to jesus or something i don't think i understand the second part of this I've never heard of a Christian who said that you should not avoid sin because I think sin is the main thing Christianity wants you to avoid. But I, I think people people always have sin, I think, is a way I would understand that. Um, so the morals, that would come into the lifestyle. Um, so the gods oftentimes are the ones who keep justice they punish people who act badly and there need to be stories or maybe some codes like the ten commandments or the levitical purity codes that tell you what's right and wrong and if you do the wrong things in the wrong context in the in the certain contexts then the gods are going to punish you that's most that's most of what it is i think this appears in stories and um like, when the gods punish people for doing certain things, not honoring their agreements, first and foremost, being hubristic in the in the Greek tradition, um, 
that's how it's ingrained in this religion. And people hear these stories when they're young, people hear these stories even later, and if this is truly believed in society, this is the religion that people practice, they're going to take away things from these stories. People will analyze them, they'll think about them, and they'll be uncomfortable when they see somebody making this transgression that somebody in the story made. See what I'm saying? Um, taboo things in the society are also big. Um, I think ancient Israel has, has a lot of taboo things like pork, homosexuality, sacrificing your kids to Molech. It's crazy that those last two are right next to each other in Leviticus. Um, but every, every society has those kinds of taboos. Our society is a little bit more liberal with them. The only taboos we have are like incest, racism. I don't know. Ra that's not a taboo. That's just bad incest is bad too don't get on me <laughs> um but the gods are also seen as like ensuring that people don't do these taboo things you know um aspects of cultures are attributed to figures i talked a little bit earlier about there's a story where zeus takes a young boy and then has sex with him slash rapes him who knows um and that kind of just allows the Greeks to do that. Because they did that anyways. They just wanted a story to, for them to say, like, yeah, Zeus did it. That's what we do. Chill out. <laughs> um, so a priestly class. A priestly class or, like, shamans or storytellers. Shamans is not, a, is not comparable to the priestly class. I shouldn't have said that. But priestly classes, the people who actually know things about the religions, like imams, people who speak to people about these things, tell the stories, interpret them, they're big in keeping the moral values of a religion. Say you're in medieval Europe and somebody in confession talks about having an affair with some with farmer, farmer Schumacher's wife or whatever. The priest may listen to that and they may choose to make their next sunday sermon against adultery warning of the dangers of that you're gonna go to hell if you do that so the priest kind of keeps those things in line in that situation you know it's, it's more complex more things happen than that and it gets really blurry and honestly priests don't always know what to do because they're using an ancient text as their moral guidance anyways um but the priest will the priestly class and, and the people who know the culture, the traditions, the oral tradition really well will often be the ones that kind of hand out this, this wisdom of the stories that have developed over time, the authoritative interpretations of sacred passages of the Bible, Quran, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and holidays and communal gatherings. I'm just going to leave, leave that there. Vikings believed that hell was located in the south, in the ground, and down the Yggdrasil. It's complicated, but at the same time, interesting how they adapted physical beliefs to reality. Yes, and um, the Chinese Taoists, I think after the Han Dynasty, had a belief that the, that the afterworld was to the west, which kind of coincides with Journey to the West, where Sung Wukong goes to the west. Haven't finished uh, overly sarcastic productions, uh, uh, series on them so i don't know if they actually go to the afterlife but who knows uh, uh quite a lot been streaming for an hour and 20 minutes so there's a quite a lot to have missed but i will upload it later if you want to watch it okay um so yeah that's actually that's a a very interesting point that directions don't have to be like like when you keep going it's still earth you know it's still a recognizable world oftentimes societies uh even greek society with alexander alexander the great they thought that the more you'd go the more monsters there'd be the more supernatural it gets there are dog people there are giant monsters there are sea monsters there's a land of complete darkness there's the amazons the warrior women of a rich treasure island you know it just gets fantastical because people like speculating about what's out there 
and it's easy to throw in things that you already know about like an afterlife you know or um for example i don't remember what tribe it is but there is an amazonian tribe that i learned about in a class where in the afterlife when you die essentially your soul rises up to the milky way and it travels along there and apparently that lines up with the amazon river so they believed that the afterlife was at the end of the river so the afterlife is the atlantic ocean <laughs> you die and you go to a dark place filled with cod <laughs> okay <laughs> like valheim dude people keep talking about valheim i don't know anything about it i kind of want to start playing it though <laughs> oh yeah let me just say a religion not really a thing religions in themselves are super diverse um even if there is like a like a head authority that maintains over certain things there's still diversity in there like Catholicism. There's different schools of Catholicism, even though the Pope is always at the top. You know what I'm saying? What's... Oh, I see. Um... Yeah, Zatcham. The Aurora Borealis being the... Uh, uh, the Bifrost, the bridge to one afterlife. Hi, Jay. Hell yeah, I got the Minotaur fit. Um, slightly off the flow of the conversation. That's good, because I have exhausted whatever I was just talking about. But how would morals work with polytheism? If different gods have different ideals and morals, it seems like they could cause issues somewhere. I would say different gods have different morals, but not every god is treated equally. Like, generally... Let, let's use... Uh, let's use Norse mythology as an example. Odin, Thor, Freya, Balder. Among them, there is a, like, common sense of what's good and bad. Each god does good and, good and bad things for their own reasons. But their reasons don't necessarily have to line up with morality. Just because a god does it doesn't mean it's moral. So they have their own morals, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's part of the larger conception that the society has of goodness. Um, and the same goes the other way. There's bad things that the gods do too. Like Loki does a lot of lying. <laughs> he does a lot of stupid things that get people in trouble and in bad situations. Like literally murdering Balder. So... I don't, think, I don't think it's the morals of the gods that show what you should do in your religion. It's how the story presents those morals of the gods. Or what the gods do that shows what morality they have. Because Loki obviously doesn't have a problem with lying. But if you read the stories, you say, okay, this guy is getting his comeuppance for being an asshole liar. You know? Odin is also seen as kind of an asshole. Like, he's very wise, he's very clever, and he's insanely smart, but he's always trying to get people killed, especially when he pisses, when they piss him off, you know? So, I think there's a certain consistency among all the gods, even if they have different morals. The society... How do I, how, how do I want to say this? The society will treat these morals differently comparing the gods actions to like their own values you know that one wasn't very eloquent i'm sorry dex og why do some religions support monogamy while others support polygamy and even when in similar religions honestly um to avoid monogamy and uh and polygamy I think those are more just about the, the social situation of the cultures that the religions come from. Um, I could not tell you the population pressures of ancient Jewish society or ancient Arabic society, Arab society. Excuse me. But I know the Arabs were desert nomads from the peninsula. And 
there are a good amount of nomadic tribes out there that practice polygamy. Um, whereas maybe there was a certain population pressure that made it so they wanted more women to be more spread out among the men and monogamy came became more prevalent in Jewish society. That's a thing. Religions aren't necessarily the cause of these beliefs being real. Like, the beliefs already exist in society. They're just enshrined in a religion. A religion makes them real. It gives them a reason. This is why you should follow it. It. Nobody in ancient times is going to say, here's why polygamy is good, because that way we can have more children and we'll support a larger population, creating a larger economic boom for it. Nobody think thought like that back then. Um, having it in the religion keeps things going the way they're going. And if they're going pretty well, that religion is going to prosper more and more people are going to come under this religion, whether through born or maybe they're conquesting people. So that's my answer to that. A lot of things in religion aren't religion. They're just culture that are enshrined in religion. Like it's like carving it's like carving your beliefs into like a rock you know but that rock is a story about the gods that makes you feel emotional at the end and it has an impact on you religion is just a part of beliefs of somebody's culture not necessarily the origin of beliefs yeah that's right epic gamer mormons were just really smart about economics true that's why they have like a few billion dollars in the stock market right now crazy how the u.s can't tax that Right. Yeah, Lornex, that's exactly right. Religion, well, they write, religions mold to culture and society as much as they mold those cultures and society to fit itself. That's a great way of putting it. Um, I think it, it's literally just the idea that we have the concept of a religion. That's not, that's not necessarily true, that there is such thing as a religion just the way people do things it's what they believe it's what they what they think all right so let's look at let's look at some of these bad boys so a big part of religions and how things are portrayed is the rule of awesome whatever inspires people what brings them awe that's a lot of the uh, part that's a lot of the realm of coming up with religions I can, I can answer about how gods get names in a little bit, but let me do this first. So here's the Buddha. It's a strange, very strange painting of him, but here he is. Why do you think he would be put in this way? We have, like, the sun behind him. We have him in, in nature. We have him sitting on a rock under a tree. And we have two swans doing a cute heart thing right here. What brings the Buddha to be looking like this? I think that the sun is awesome. If you know about the Buddha's story, then meditating on a under a tree. I don't know about on a rock. Missed that detail. And kind of being at one with nature. It's strange, but like it makes sense in the context of the story. It's kind of an awesome image that this guy is just he's sitting under a tree, reaching enlightenment. Boom enlightenment the jesus one kind of the same thing with the halo around his head it's like the sun being back there it's reminiscent of like sun god imagery i know the romans did that to jesus i genuinely do not know what this means cross fire heart thorns i know the thorns and the cross are representative of his execution by the romans is the fire soul is is this the soul the sun behind it i don't understand yo shout out to what he's my biggest fan since i was at 40k some scrim some scrimbitators okay and then the heart and the fight like, like i genuinely don't understand what this part of jesus means this isn't like a like a a widespread religious symbol it's just part of this really popular depiction of jesus now, Moses, why would Moses be portrayed this way? It's super dramatic, 
every painting that I found of Moses is extremely dramatic. But he's surrounded by storms. He's on a mountain talking down to the dudes, apparently. And uh, I, I, this is probably after he smashed one of one of these these bad boys. Maybe this is right before. But perhaps he is like. The storms behind him is reminiscent of God's power. I don't know what the light up here is doing. Up the mountain is light. He's on the mountain. Down at the people are shadow. This one, I think the, the drama of the story and the context of the picture is what gives it the, the rule of awesome. But this one doesn't have really awesome imagery in it. Maybe should have picked out a better thing. Now, Muhammad. I can't show Muhammad, like... You look up Muhammad, there's two paintings of, of the dude right there, but like I'm not going to do that because that's not how the religion recalls Muhammad. It's this name. I think this says peace be unto him. Um, but why would they give it such fine art? Why would they invest so much in the calligraphy of showing Muhammad? because they want the rule of awesome you want fit you want your founding members your important figures to be represented as divine incredible almost perfect sometimes powerful and even this where it doesn't show muhammad it doesn't show anything he, he does no scenes nothing like that just the art around his name just shows that this is an important individual he's powerful and we respect him for that you know what i'm saying um these aren't gods that's confucius i think the same thing can be said for confucius confucius is not a religious character he's a philosophical character but a lot of it has to do with the same thing as religion um i think confucius the whole thing about him is that he's just super wise he was just correct about a bunch of things apparently to the confucians but so they would want to show him as a as an old ass dude with these kick ass iconic eyebrows. And this is just a, a buryat ceremony, so that has nothing to do with it. Okay. Hold on, there was one guy, one person that I said it's him smashing the tablets, that makes sense. That I said I would get back to. Oh, God's names, yes. So the names of gods. Something's wrong with my arm, I think I worked it out too much. Um the names of gods. Oftentimes, they would just be words. So, like, one of the the early gods in the Vedic religion, like really early Hinduism, was named Dyaushpatr, which comes from uh, Proto Europe, Proto Indo European uh, uh, for Sky Father. So, literally, just calling it Sky Father, like the creator of the world, dominant in the sky. That's just how they would call them. Um, most gods, though, those names like like morph and they 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 switch. So, uh, Dios, which is how you say uh, God in Proto Indo European, became Zeus in Greek. So that's just a the the name uh, of the description became like a proper name that nobody would use anymore. Um, I think I th what is what's the name for God? What's the word for God in Greek? Is it Theo, Teo, something like that? Um, so yeah, it it, be, it morphs into a name that is no longer used as the regular word. Another thing is that gods often get these epithets to them. If you ever read the Odyssey, Athena is called the gray-eyed goddess. Mars is like the bringer of war you know um these epithets can literally become new gods so so the thing about gods is that they have a lot of different associations with them for example pan i keep going back to greece because everyone likes greece pan was a very ancient god of i think nature of the forest he was worshipped in arcadia in the forest of the Peloponnese in Greece um, however 
there is there there's a theory that Hermes, the messenger god uh, of the later Greek pantheon, was an epithet for Pan. But if you look at Pan, Pan and Hermes are nothing alike. Pan has goat legs. He plays a fife. I think he's an asshole. I'm not sure. Hermes is cool. He has a winged hat and winged winged shoes with a, a scepter with snakes around it. The imagery, I think, can come about later. The epithet of Pan and Hermes separating into two different gods with different associations around them. I'm not exactly sure how that happens. I think it, I think people just decide that certain associations are too important, too big to have as like a side association of a god and it becomes a new god. Maybe. That's my guess. But Hermes gains these images and these symbols especially as he gets added to the stories of the Olympian gods. Excuse me. Not to mention that Hermes I think is like one of the youngest ones of the Olympian gods. I might be thinking of Apollo though. Yev Pater is also comes from Proto Indo European. Is Yev Pater is that Slavic? I'm not sure. Yo, Ben La Liberty, shout out, he loves this stream. Do epithets occur in other religions? Only know of them in Greco Roman mythology. Yeah, epithets happen I think pretty much everywhere. Um it's sometimes it's hard to discern what is an epithet and what's just like another name. I know, uh, like think of a Quetzalcoatl. He's known as the feathered serpent because that's that's what he is. That that's the main idea of the god. Uh, this god, no, this. <laughs> I just closed out of it. Let me search up Inca staffed god. If you see anything like Hillary Clinton porn up there, it's not it's not mine. All right, yeah, it's Vera Kocha. I don't know how to pronounce uh I don't know how to pronounce um Quechua, but this is the staffed god. And his name is Vera Kocha. I don't know if the staffed god is an epithet that they gave it to him, but the god is represented by a certain motif. Yev Pater is Roman Jupiter. But Jupiter is the Roman Jupiter. <laughs> so an aspect of a god can develop into its own god. Yes, absolutely. An aspect of a god can develop into its own god. That's kind of what hap that kind of that is kind of what happens naturally. I imagine a lot of aspects of gods that became their own gods died off. You know? Names of gods were El Elyon Yahweh, which is not speeched out, yeah, Yehovah. Right. And Adonai, Hashem, things that modern Jews use. Um, I can say, so a god can split into two gods based on their names, but also multiple gods can be merged into one god based on their names. Yahweh was originally, I've heard a lot of things. I've heard a, a, a god of blacksmithing, a god of war, a god of volcanoes, a god of the sky. Unsure which. But Yahweh being called El or El Elyon. Um, El was another god of the ancient Canaanite pantheon. Yahweh was a god there too. El was the supreme god. El literally means god in, well, ancient Canaanite, Canaanite. But eventually, as Yahweh became much more popular among Israelite society and became the one god worshipped above all the others and then rejecting all the others, the name El was put onto God. And you can also see this with the associations that happens. Um, if you read the book of, I think it's... Is it Ezekiel? No, not Ezekiel. What am I thinking? There's another one that starts with an E. One of the uh, Israelite prophets, he challenges the priests of Baal, a god of storms and fertility, to a to a, a challenge to start like a, like a big fire just calling on the god and so the baal worshippers 
call upon Baal, they self-flagellate, they sacrifice a million times, can't get Baal to start a fire for them. Then Eliza, Elijah, that's the prophet, um, calls on God, and God strikes the the big wooden pit um, with lightning. This is an example of, of whoever wrote this passage using the associations with Baal, the storm god associations given to Yahweh to show that Yahweh is cooler than Baal because Yahweh did what Baal couldn't and what Baal couldn't do was Baal's own thing. See what I'm saying? So associations and names of gods can both split and form back together. Yahweh could have originally been a storm god too, but Baal was much more certainly a storm god. I would personally think Yahweh's a war god because the Exodus story kind of calls for that, but I'm not sure. I know he's a god of history. What's the difference between a religion and a cult? Uh, in a religion, the founder is dead. In a cult, the founder is alive and taking people's money and probably having sex with them. Epithets in religious evolution could be really, really interesting to like create explanations for in a setting where gods are real. I agree. Um, <laughs> so if you get mad at one of the gods that are real, you just start calling them a different name so that some of their power has to come out of them as another god. All right, in Havamal, Odin is said to have something like, if you've trusted in me one time and it turned out that I have tricked you, the next time you will know better not to trust Odin next time. That makes a lot of sense. Like I said a little bit earlier, Odin is an asshole. <laughs> it's really funny to see. He's super old and super wise and he knows everything, but he's an asshole. My horns are crooked. Oh, no. Oh, no. Tell me, do I lean to the left or do I lean to the right? Only I know the real answer to that. Create your own deity right now. Oh, shit. I'll do that. Okay. So let me think of my gnome culture. Let's do this in GIMP. Let me check to see if this will pop up. So my gnome culture. There is a... a yeah, here we go. There is a large desert and plains where yeah no <laughs> a large desert and plains where kind of like it's the back burner of society if you know what i'm saying people don't really go there for much so how about we start out with a god of plains and like wild and wilderness he'll be like kind of a nature god um, I don't have a map of it. Let me, let me just, it's something like this. These are mountains. Whoop. This isn't looking good, but you know, turn that weight off. So this is the gnome homeland. Here's the desert. It kind of goes a little further south. And here's the plains that go basically all around the desert. And of course, like any good self-respecting grassland in the hills and mountains as forests. Okay, so how are we gonna make a god of this area that is thematically consistent with the geography and the people as I know them? I haven't world built the gnomes too much, but we'll see. That's what that's this is what the gnome land looks like. It's called uh it's called let me It's called Glel Glelisan. I would use an A with a dash above it, but I don't want to Google that right now. Okay. So let's assume that the native people out here were hunter gatherers. No, not hunter gatherers, nomads. Their range would probably be their range would probably be mostly around here. Mostly of the grasslands, some of the forests, the rivers, and a little bit into the desert. A little bit into the desert. <laughs> yeah, Mug of Joe, this is the YouTube channel as in the Minecraft server. 
Would the gnomes per have a preferred mount in the plains like an area of a horse god would make a lot of sense? Interesting. I was thinking more of like the land itself. I kind of wanted to go into forest fires, but horses. If I had more time to world build this, I would, I would make something more interesting than horses. But let's go with horses. So first, let's come up with a, a few associations. Just two or three. Horses. Plains. And I said forest fires. This is kind of a, a, a an eclectic list of things. Okay. So, what do I need to flesh out this god? It needs to have a story. It needs to have a name. It needs to have maybe a ritual surrounding it. And it needs to have like a thematic significance to life. So, let's start with the thematic significance to life. So, horses. What do, what, what do you have about horses? They're wild. They can hurt you. They are really powerful. They're really fast. They require a lot of training so what what about that rings with planes and forest fires I kind of like a lot of training and wild for planes and forest fires to be kind of connecting them so this god will be a bit of the wilderness it won't be really connected to like family structures or like going into towns and trading it won't be about, I don't know, fishing, stuff like that. It won't be a, a familial god. It'll be out there, nature, the difference, chaos, because that's forest fires. Um, so if it's about horses, plains, and forest fires, and he's chaotic, maybe... this god okay 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 this god will be about turnovers and new things forest fires or more specifically plains fires because like lightning strikes the plains it's all that um they light up really easily because they're dry the forest lights on fire too so how about this god is protective of nature it doesn't like nature being harmed or disturbed too much polluted but it will destroy it so that new things can emerge out of that and for that horses can be a big part of the new things that emerge so let's make it so that this tribe has a specific fetish for horses like all good like all good world building uh, nomadic tribes but they also believe that the wild is naturally destructive but respawning they're going to be a war society if they like this god um now he needs a story let's call him kane once again i would do e with a line over it sounds like a god of some natural disaster Horse sacrifices, yes, that's a that's a that's a good thing. Um, if you have a society which really likes horses, it might sound counterintuitive to sacrifice horses, but if a horse is worth sacrificing, that means they don't eat it anyways. They have a special liking of horses, so killing one is a big deal and is and is good for rituals. It'd be like if we killed a dog ritually. Killing a dog ritually would have a lot more, like, sacred significance than if we, I don't know, killed a chicken or, like, like a bug, <laughs> you know? How about a co horse cult after eating weeds in a specific area? Eating weeds in a specific area it kind of violates the rule of cool, in my opinion. If the weeds were dope, like, if they were giant and spiky and had, like, poison and maybe sometimes, like, caused fire or were, like, static shock or something, I would agree. We could add that. Why not? Magic plants. Because of course there are magic plants. This is my Dungeons and Dragons world. It's my homebrew. 
literally no one can tell me what to do here. Uh, they will most likely eat it and it's turned to part of the ritual itself. Nomads would never waste resources like that. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, so what I would see for Kane right here, and this is only one name of his, if you guys want to come up with more names for Kane, go for it. But what I'm seeing is that he's very into natural disasters. Um, the means by which new things are created. And protecting things until it's their time to go. Right? So, like, if a bunch of people come into the forest and they're ruining the forest, but they're not destroying the forest in a way that'll it'll birth it anew. Like, let's say they're just making it toxic. They're dumping stuff all over it. Kane is not going to like that. Kane is not going to like that at all. Um, now for a story involving Kane. This is a hard... This would be a hard one. Let me put this down so I can type. Can you guys still hear me, hear me all right? Okay. So let's focus it around a gnome who, mm, why would a new gnome be? A city gnome travels with nomads. City gnome travels with nomads. Nomads. <laughs> to go north. Thank you, Lornext. I think you're great content. What about if after the sacrifice their corpse turns into something? Oh, that's a cool idea. If if they like burned the corpse with a bunch of things like, like maybe the magic plants, they. So so ritual. This would happen in the story, to like enshrine that 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 it is a thing. Um, The gnome travels with the nomads for a while. Um, gets separated with one. Has to hunt in the woods to survive there. Learns basic respect for the forest and the plains. Also, how to hunt. The gnome who oh how about the nomad a, a rival tribe sure a rival tribe uh comes in kills the nomad and the gnome flees with just his bow he escapes into the hilly forest And the rival, tr why would the rival tribe, why would the rival tr rival tribe come after him? Maybe this is like a like a like a Hebrews Egypt story where they just hate the rival tribe, so they just want them to look as evil as possible. I love Jimmy Sweck so much because he loves me so much. Bobby, you saved my daughter from being a virgin. Okay, he es he escapes into the hilly forest. Now we need someone in there who's going to be the antagonist to what the god Kne wants. What does the god Kne want? He wants to preserve his forest until it's time to burn it. He wants to light forest fires and he wants to give people horses so that they can go burn everything else to create a new society. That's what Kne does. He's a destructive force of nature. He's the, he's, he's, he's the scout from TF2. Okay, so he escapes into the hilly forest. There he finds a bunch of city gnomes who are polluting and destroying it. I don't have to go into specifics right now. If I were making an actual story, I would. Who are polluting and destroying the forest. He hangs out with them, and three different animals come along. The Our main character gnome... like 
animal whispers him. The the three animals. Showing that he's on Kanae's side. But the city gnomes... Actually, wait, he was just hunting, wasn't he? Uh, so the main character gnome avoids the animals and lets them be. But the city gnomes kill it and then desecrate their bodies for fun. You don't know what a bunch of bored <laughs> city gnomes out in the forest are going to do. They might desecrate some bodies for fun. Your mom is a force of nature? Tell me to <laughs> tell her to hit me up, yo. Oh wait. She already did. So then as the city gnomes are leaving the forest, lightning strikes the grassland and traps them in. Killing them all. <laughs> Yes, violence. So much fun. Because it's so much fun, Jan. Get it. I just want to be Quentin Tarantino. Um, so then lightning strikes the grassland and traps them in, killing them all. Except the... Except our main character, Gnome, of course. The main character, Gnome, uh, runs into a... A lake no a pond and survives on an island there where he has a mystical vision so it's kind of ramping up in the the supernatural part of this he gets separated from his tribe three animals come in um, the three animals he should have a supernatural relationship with just a little bit maybe like he, they don't speak to him, but they, like, warn him. Uh, the main character, Gnome. What do you guys think? Vic Gnome does have a lot of plot armor from the gods. That is true. Yeah. Eh, we would, we would make more bad things happen to him if he weren't just a vehicle to show off Kane. <laughs> yeah. The main character gnome, how does he have a supernatural relationship with the beasts? With the beasts of burden. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the main character gnome will die, sure. Let's make it let's make that uh, a necessity for this story. How about the main character gnome finds that these are three animals that he hunted before but lost. They let him be. Oh wait, no, that would just make them kill him. What am I talking about? This is what this is what the my writing process is like. Adding more and more details until they stop making sense. Let's just leave that for now. That's not too important for, for Kne. That's important for a, a story that we're not really writing. Uh, he has a mystical vision on the island, seeing the whole world in flames. But after it, there's a forest and beautiful flowers growing out of it. He then wakes up and sees over the lake the god Kne. Is that is that too that's too abrupt, isn't it? His attachment to nature, his personality, and thus his spirit. Main gnome could be like Beowulf and represent an ideal to strive for. What would an ideal for a for a nomad culture be? Um How about it's like like chivalry against the animals that you hunt? And also, like, using all the body parts. Yeah. So, the main character... Had tried to hunt these three... Let's say they're three, three bears. At different points throughout the night. 
the main character had tried to hunt these three bears before, but let them all go when they got trapped. It's coincidental that this would happen to three bears, but you, you know, this isn't, it's not the most important detail. The animals come through and let's, let's call them Nomi. Let's Nomi be, but the city gnomes kill them and then desecrate their bodies for fun. Okay, so maybe instead of me, it's a messenger of me. Okay. I'll say I'll say an aspect of me because I, 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 I don't want to be super vague with or super specific. Um, he then wakes up and sees. Yeah, why not? Yeah, messenger of me. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna check the Discord right now. Sorry. There's a lot of messages on there. He then wakes up and sees a messenger of Kne, who. Actually, no, nah, that 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 has to be after the climax of this. Da 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 da. Seeing the whole world go up in flames is kind of intense, but it's not a struggle for him to go through. He fights out of the flames. Er, hmm. After fighting to escape it, but then after there's growing out and a messenger of Kne is in front of him. Sure. Kne What what weapon do you think Kne would use? I think a like a bow that would shoot lightning. Does that make sense? Maybe like with winds. So like if he purposefully misses his arrow, it's winds that go across cuz that's always a huge thing in in large flat like areas plains huge winds dust storms maybe yeah go to sleep spoken claw m 5 a.m bro i'm not i'm not worth watching at 5 a.m an axe club who is kane kane is a god that we're making up right this moment a blazing mace okay we got spear bow axe pole arm <laughs> he uses a mace blazing mace axe or bow and i i kind of like that and that's lotl well, if they have bows and arrows, they're a little beyond atlatls. So I'm sorry, I can't use that one. Not in good conscience. Let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do like a, actually, I think a spear is cool. Because he could throw it and he could just use it. Um, can I has a spear? And he throws it at, or Kane's messenger has a spear, and he throws it at Nomi. And he is struck by lightning. He feels himself die. But he awakes on the island, and the forest around him is the same, looks the same as in his dream. All right, now Nomi has to undergo some, <laughs> you're foaming at the, at the mouth watching my imagination run wild. If you wanted to watch my imagination run wild, you have to see me on drugs. <laughs> We're dying and coming back to life here, boys. Okay, so what transformation would would Nomi undergo? We Nomi, there's nothing about Nomi here. What if he's just like a different guy? <laughs> like he wakes up and he's just an elf. <laughs> How mind fucky would that be? Oh, that'd be so funny. How about? 
you want to do some like Gandalf thing? Or maybe we could bring the bears back and he's got some like bear blood in him. Or like a bear is there mating with him as he wakes up. <laughs> Religion is just one big trip that never slows down. I agree with that. <laughs> Can't disagree. Kane's messenger has a spear and he throws it at Nomi and Nomi is struck by lightning. Uh, he feels himself swallowed by fire crushed by falling trees how could grass in a grassland kill you trampled by horses oh oh these shouldn't be bears they should be horses kne is a god of horses the horses before right three horses the main character had tried to hunt these three horses but let them all go when they got trapped the animals come through and let and we'll say the nomi can basically speak to them warning about these city folk The city folk gnomes kill the horses and desecrate their bodies for fun. Okay. He wakes up on the floor of his bedside with a shell falling on him and his blankets are still wrapped around him. Stinging grass swarmed by ants. Grass cuts can kill you. Horse mating, let's go. Two guys, one horse. Every day of the week, bro. Okay. He wakes up and... He needs to be undergo some transformation, but there's no there's no nothing about Nomi. He's just kind of a badass with <laughs> with plot armor. <laughs> um How about he has a horse dick? He just <laughs> He wakes up from dying and it's just Whoa! Dude <laughs> For a gnome, it's gotta be six inches for that. <laughs> A horse dick and really big hands. <laughs> oh, I like that. He grows taller. I gotta keep him a gnome though, just so it like stays within the gnome society, but but he grows taller. And I'll put him with a bigger dick. What do you expect? You're watching a stonework stream. <laughs> okay. He grows taller. And there's a horse right there, right on the edge of the pond. He takes the horse back to the nomads he was traveling with. That night, they sacrifice one of the oldest horses they have along with magic plants times three times four and the horse body burns and turns into flowers a little full circle kind of maybe the transformation bit is cut off before the reveal and is later told in pieces throughout the story till the revelation comes at the climax so okay so this is just an example so one, I did I did not make the story about Kne or whatever. I think it's more interesting to have the gods just be like there, kind of in the background, and you learn about them through other people. That's up to you. This is just how I like to do it. Um, but now after reading this, you you have an idea of what Kne is, the symbolism of what he does. He destroys things and then brings them back up and he protects nature like like he kills the dudes that desecrated the horse bodies um and now he also has a lightning spear or like a fire spear or something it's just okay magic gnomish weed you're right with magic gnome marijuana this 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 ending is really cliche 
and it's, it's super cheesy but whatever it's fine for now um but do you guys see how a story like this conveys everything so much better than if somebody gets in a pulpit and starts telling you about oh dude this god is cool he's got a hammer that throws lightning he protects he protects the forest all that kind of stuff don't tell me about your god show me about your god you know um this this kane story has the three pillars that of world building religions that that i came up with earlier um it has lifestyle about how you should respect the forest but also understand that it's ever changing and it's destructive and it's violent and if you mess with it you're gonna get hurt that's lifestyle belief kane is a god that does these things and if you do these things you're gonna get smit by him and uh ritual uh just the very end that night they sacrifice one of the oldest horses they have and the horse body turns into flowers do you does that make sense stories like these i think are the best vehicle for showing anything about your religion if you want a cool religion i think writing a story like this is going to do it and i definitely could turn this into like a like a cool fun probably six to ten page story if i really wanted to um going into city gnome and know me and the nomads and really showing what the world building is like here but not right now <laughs> but this is a definitely a solid place to start um i'm glad you guys went through this with me what do you what do you think kne should look like at first i would give him like antlers but he's also a horse deity what do you guys think you can tell i don't know how to draw antlers i am your science teacher who every time she goes to the chalkboard or he i don't discriminate every time they go to the chalkboard they're like i'm not an artist so bear with me am i gonna do it am i gonna do it am i gonna do it he's a floating head from the wizard of oz a horse with really long legs and multiple legs yo really in discord somebody drew them as a horse head with fire i don't know i'm not i'm not trying to show dms or anything if they did it in art oh yes bro that's so dope i'm down for that would he have like a human body so he can like oh wait no that's not kane that throws the spear that's so dope okay officially now in my world building Kne is a horse head in fire. That's so dope. And he has like storms below him. How about that? I think it'd be neat if he had a burnt up body like the burning bits. Bro. Yeah, King Doodle, this is so cool. Thank you for making this. Okay, well I'm keeping I'm keeping this right besides all these gods. Okay, let's get rid of this bullshit then. Hell yeah. Okay. So so we made a, a furry. We made a furry of fury. That's what we made. Um and if we were to use this What would the society of this land be like? Cause the gnomes I usually have them conquering this area and like actually fighting with another empire over here for the area because the plains in the desert are too small for the nomads to really properly use. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe they could be powerful in this area and create some kind of small nomadic state. <laughs> Lots of gods are, fur are furries, TBH. Absolutely. Everyone always talks about the Egyptian gods. Personally, I don't find anything, like, cool about them. There are some cool stories, but I feel like it's like like being raised on that being the mythology also greek mythology 
I don't know. Those two I'm not super interested in. I know some Greek mythology just because everybody else does. Um, but yeah, we made a cool god uh, called Kne. The lightning is its legs stomping down. I love it. <laughs> By the way, I'm out of this cup. I'm drinking coffee, so I'm not going to go to sleep tonight. Oh, yeah. What's my favorite religion? Um, Zen Buddhism, because that's the closest thing to, like, that's the closest real religion to, like, my worldview. Like, I don't, I don't believe in a lot of supernatural things, but Zen Buddhism has a good lifestyle. Maybe thunder is said to be the sound of Kane galloping across the plains. Ooh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, so so Kane, so that's another thing. These associations that we started out with, we did not end with. And I, I think it's better that that happens. Um, that way it becomes more realistic. There's more going on to the character. Uh, Kane having lightning is a really cool thing but like it's not his only thing you know um maybe if i were to write another story about kne with another god where they're equal and they're actual characters there could be more of a motivation and a personality there but this one not really kne is kind of distant the only thing is there's a messenger what is my favorite mythology um mesoamerican slash Mayan I answered this a little bit earlier but it's just really cool to me I don't know much about it I've read the Popol Vuh but it's I love the idea of the Aztec sacrifice like killing a dude and then throwing him down the temple stairs <laughs> it, it must have been a brutal thing to see but when the state is a militarized empire like it makes sense that they're gonna want to do that you know and having everybody there is like, wow, they killed the guy, wow, you know? I think it's just, it, it's really fun. <laughs> Indian Hindu mythology is super dope. Um, I read the Bhagavad Gita, but it's huge. <laughs> like, it's just massive. <laughs> there's, there's, it's difficult to get started, you know? My day was pretty good. What did I do? I did some editing, chilling, you know? <laughs> okay Axum Nation be having a whole meeting about writing the stories of our gods rituals and celebrations oh that's dope oh your your nation's called Axum that's pretty dope like the like Ethiopia from long long ago hola soy mexicano que bueno que te guste el folclore de mi tierra y mi gente I think I understand that hello I'm Mexican. Uh, how good you want, like, the folklore of my land and my people. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that kind of stuff is really cool. Glilly San's story is representation of what you like. I wouldn't say I necessarily like be that. Like, it's something I believe in, that nature is, one, don't mess with it or it might kill you, and two, destruction begets creation afterwards. But, you know, it's not like a total reflection of me. I'm trying to project myself into a nomadic society, which is why I have something with horses in there. I don't know shit about horses. <laughs> I don't even live near horses. The closest horse is probably a thousand miles away. Who knows? Uh, so yeah <laughs> it's a representation of a story that i would tell how about that i'll come to brazil logan pierce that sounds good my favorite mythological story dude i know it's basic but like i really like the i just really like genesis of the bible like israelite mythology is what i'm most well versed in because i've read it and i've like studied it for class but like early genesis i think is just pretty beautiful you know 
in a way that I haven't found a lot of other things. I know a bunch of stories out there are going to be equally as cool as Genesis, but I have the cultural context to really understand it thoroughly, you know? And, like, the Mayan one, like, I, I've read about that, but I don't feel the cultural context for that, you know? I'm interested in Hawaiian mythology, but I don't know much except for the octopus myth. I would like to know about the octopus myth, because I don't know what that is. No, Spyrex, you're chilling. You don't have to put things in English if you don't want to. Um, I can only partially read Spanish or a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. Just want to say that being engaged in creating this god with y'all has been very cool. Epic Gamer, I'm glad you found it very cool, and I'm glad it seems like you've enjoyed yourself here, because that's the point. Yeah, I'm going to upload this after it's done. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about for religions? Um, we could go over the organization with, like, priesthoods. I don't have much there, but we could brainstorm, definitely. Um, I have this twice for some reason. We could also talk about ethnic religions versus uh, proselytizing religions. So... Yeah, actually, I think that'd be a good thing to talk about because that's like the foundation of how these work. So ethnic religions versus proselytizing religions. They're not totally real categories, but they're useful for world building. An ethnic religion is when a people lives on the land for a long time and they like develop stories around it. Things happened here. Our people had things to do with the gods here. What's really important in these religions is places and people of the same group. So in Islam, there's a there's a there's a there's a well where one of Muhammad's the women in Muhammad's circle travels and then like prays intensely on like a rock and then like a spring opens up because it's a miracle that God creates and it's called Zamzam. And there is a, that's a legitimate, like, aquifer oasis in the Arabian desert, Zamzam. Having stories, that's not, that's not even an ethnic religion, but having stories around the place that you're in, literally, attributing spaces to be holy because they're cool or important, you know, like, um, Jesus supposedly died on a certain hill in Jerusalem. Now that hill is an extremely holy site where there's a big church. Excuse me. Um, Judaism was centered by the, regu by, the, by the temple complex. And the second temple was destroyed by the Romans. And the wall there is a sacred space for Jewish people to go pray. And it's very holy. So sacred places come about as as places in the stories you know what i'm saying the temple is important because it's the center of the religion but the wailing wall is the wailing wall this particular sacred place because of the story that it was involved in it's the last wall of the destroyed temple the last time the the organization that the old testament wants was real that's why it's important um Ethnic religions, you can think of them as, excuse me, that was unattractive. Now, if I see any of you in real life, I'm not going to get any Tinder matches. I love you too, Jay. Never mind. You're going to be my Tinder match. Um, ethnic religions, people grow up in a certain place, basically, a people group over a long time. And all these places have certain stories around them. And those stories make those places important to the religion. Now, a proselytizing religion usually starts out as like a heresy of an ethnic religion. So think about Jesus was persecuted by the Jewish people in the story because they didn't like his, his authority or his new ideas. Christianity was persecuted by Judaism and its literally first stage according to christianity's story i'm not saying whether or not jewish authorities killed jesus the romans killed jesus um islam 
was persecuted by uh, the powerful tribes and uh, merchant leaders in Mecca at first. And Muhammad was driven out of Mecca to Medina. And he had to come back with an army and kill them and destroy all the idols around the Kaaba, making it into a mono monotheistic thing. That's why the Kaaba is important, because it was the it was the original religious center of Mecca, but Muhammad came back and he cleansed it basically, and he's like, "This is the new center." Oh, also the Kaaba was supposedly created by Abraham. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous to me, but you know, I don't think Abraham was a real person in general. So, but if you do, that's okay, no beef. Um. Hinduism was, or not Hinduism, Buddhism was a heresy of Hinduism. Buddha wasn't really persecuted, I don't think. Like I said earlier, I think he just got into arguments with the Hindus and he won, like every single one, according to the Buddhists. But there was significant tension between Buddhists and Hindus because of their differences. Buddhism came out in a, I'll say Vedic culture, cultural tradition, because what is Hinduism? But they all start as a, a different route out of something old. And the fact that it's not tied to the land, the fact that it's, it's not about necessarily, oh, the oasis that, that we live on comes from here, or um, God anointed this particular mountain for our king to build the temple on, that kind of thing. It allows it to spread further out. You know, uh, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism are all predicated on certain ideas. Ethnic religions aren't necessarily about that. They're about... I, I, I can't tell, I can't say what they're about because they're just religions that work differently, you know. Um, but yeah, y you see what I'm saying though. Ideas can spread really, really quickly and really far but ethnic ethnically ethnic religions that are really tied to the land and are specific to that land can't go as far how do i do my research um i have a good amount of books sometimes i watch youtube videos from people who seem authoritative it's getting easier to tell who who is and isn't there are some terrible youtubers out there i'm probably one of them you shouldn't trust a word that I say. Um, I have a, a bunch of uh, classes on my belt. I'd show you the... Here's my desktop. Where is it? Right here. I have all my sources from my classes saved there so I can go back and read them. There's a bunch of stuff in there that helps me out. Um... And I also read things on, like, JSTOR. Um, I'll go to, like, the bottom of Wikipedia, you know, and just see if I can find something in there. That's a good way. I will not listen to your advice. I trust you with my life. Good, because you're about to die, because I'm the worst person to trust with your life. Ugh, when two religions merge. Ah, uh, Menachaism? Hold on, hold on. There is a religion that literally just merges uh, Christianity and Buddhism. It's a crazy religion in my opinion. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, Manichaeism, Manichaeism, has Zoroaster, Gautama Buddha, and Jesus all as major prophets. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> it... It's like this guy just read all these things. He's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And then he's just like, well, here's my own religion. You know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Th this is a... this is a. Okay, it's weird to call this Gnosticism. I don't think I know too much about it, but it doesn't sound right. <laughs> a dualistic cosmology disjuggling good, evil, spiritual world of light and evil. Actually, that does sound like Gnosticism. Never mind. But yeah, um, what else? What about the UFO cult riot, rielism? Okay, okay, so here's one thing. Religions 
very often attribute like godly powers or divine essence to things we just don't understand and seem powerful so when you're a, a bronze age person you don't understand why storms come through there's a storm god when you're somebody in our time we don't really understand a lot about space so there we could worship space and galaxies and shit like that ufos i think are an extension of that <clears throat> but the idea of ufos is kind of that there's a parallel to us out there and that's what's scary about it and they they might be more powerful i don't think most people see ufos as divine they're within our reality unless they're like fourth dimensional which oh cargo cults that's a good idea creaky cargo cults are so cool um i don't fully know the story behind this but i'll try in the pacific islands in like a, a few particular ones uh, there was, in World War II, um, one of the powers set up, like, like they went in and they set up airstrips on these natives' islands. And I think they would get some of the cargo off of there or something somehow, um, some of the, the things, the shipments. And after the war, the, sh the planes stopped. And, and they couldn't get any more uh, of the commodities that were brought over. So what ended up happening is that they would create these like mythologies and I don't, I don't, I don't know enough to call it a religion, but it sounds like a religion where they would ritually make runways and lights and they would mimic everything that the airstrip needed for planes to land and they tried to like ritually get planes to land there yeah the usa um and get their uh get some of the commodities and it's it's crazy i don't know how much they attributed this to this to the divine i don't want to say that native people thought americans were gods but it seems like there was a like a significant like cultural impact that these airplanes had on these people and that cultural impact was done ritualistically and kind of ceremonially in a in a way that replicated the way that the the airplanes came in you know like it's super interesting in my opinion they painted usa in their bodies they praised one of the pilots john from <laughs> There's also some major person. Oh, John Frum. Okay, let's look it up. John Frum. We'll have to use Wikipedia for this one just because. Cargo cults in the island of Tana and Vanuatu. American World War II servicemen who will bring wealth and prosperity to the people if they follow him. You look like you. You got a white face. You tall men. You live long South America. That's so interesting. So wait, let's look up the cargo cults. Let's see what they look like. And there's no pictures. <laughs> cargo cult. But yeah, you, you can see they're, they're attributing these. See, that's a wooden plane. That's so crazy. Whoa. This is disturbing. <laughs> yeah, we Americans would be bad gods. In fact, I'd argue that we already have been bad gods. That's so cool, though. Yeah, so... Religion is kind of scientific. I said I said something against this earlier, but it seems like it is. If these people are treating this religiously, the things that bring planes to the island, then they're replicating the things that they saw worked, and they're trying to do it again. Oh my god, look at that. I mean, I doubt that it works who knows if it does but it definitely has the spirit of of one of these it's crazy yeah this is like the third stream i've done what do kne gnomes wear what do kne gnomes wear so i imagine you're asking about the nomads that worship kne 
I don't know. What do regular nomads wear? Let's search up, uh, what are the other plains? Let's search up Bedouins. I guess these would be in the desert. Nah, yeah. No, that, that doesn't work. Bedouins aren't good. Let's search, uh, plains Turks. <laughs> nope, that's Turks and Caicos. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I'm going to stop that line of Googling. Are cargo cults still happening? Creaky says they think so. So, isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. How can a, how can planes start a religion? Whatever you're fascinated by, I guess, you know? I have heard of the, the, oh, Anatolia, interesting. I have heard of the, uh, the tribe that worships Prince Philip. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't think there's any reason to worship a, a stupid-ass monarch. Anatolia uh, nomads. Yeah, I can get down. I can be down with this. Let's say some something something like this, but a, a little thinner, a little thinner, because that's that's not that's not real clothes. <laughs> Yeah, so I imagine they'd wear, like, hoods, <laughs> cloths around them, probably some colorful things. You know what I'm saying? Horse teeth to honor horses, horse bones. Maybe a chief will have a horse skull around his neck. That'd be kind of cool. Just look at what Native Americans wore. What does a Comanche warrior look like? Oh, that's badass. Look at the, I think these are bone beads. It's strewn together in like a plate. That's so dope. Not even talking about religion anymore, it's chilling. <laughs> Perhaps Slavic clothes. Slavics, the Slavs are farmers though. How about Slavic nomad? They used to be nomads, I think, when they came down from Northern Europe. This dude looks like a Native American, yo. That's the last Di Diadokai, though. <laughs> Who doesn't worship David Hasselhoff from the SpongeBob movie? They got tickets to the SpongeBob movie. I think the clothing, the clothing of, of the people in my world are always afterthoughts. If, if you look at my, my Minotaur video, <laughs> the, the clothing that I put on these dudes is so fucking stupid. <laughs> these guys are wearing basically Roman togas and like Spartan wrist binds in the far north this is a nomad who's got like an animal skin stretched over his horns that's got to be the most, <laughs> that's got to be the most inefficient way of doing this i think i think these look fine though they're just bland no one's gonna wear good clothing to go on war though this is another <clears throat> this is another one of the stupid horn clothes um the only one that i think is really cool is this and it's only because it looks like a little Skyrim-y, I guess. He's got a scarf because he's absolutely fashionable. Do I get ad revenue from my own views on my videos? No, I don't. <laughs> That's like a specific thing they told us. At least I think. Oh, wait. This is what the gnomes were. How do I pronounce this? Mouth, mouthini. Mouthini. That's it. Mouthini. But yeah, my world building, the clothes, you can tell, are not a big deal. <laughs> I don't put a lot of effort into the clothes. More into the didgeridoos. Gnomes! <laughs> Those were noblins. You know, I gotta search it. If porn comes up. Oh, never mind. 
<laughs> Noggin Gnome, Surreal Memes Wiki. I'm so glad that that exists. And I'm not glad this exists. What the hell is this? Perfect. Hello, Kakapo. I've seen you on Minecraft. Get Rathnir back up. Sheesh. I wish I could, bro. I miss Rathnir more and more every day. Uh, but that's how it goes. I, I can't do anything about it. I don't even have access to the console anymore. That's all right. I don't need it. But, like, I, I can't help with the mechanical things. Although, Envis would always get mad at me because I'd break it. <laughs> Can you make money off live streams? Only if people give me money during the live streams. What do you think about how Catholic councils tried to implement logic to defy, justify theological decision? Everyone tries to use logic to justify theological decision. Like, if, if they didn't see it as logical, they wouldn't be that religion. I don't think. The only thing is the logic is embedded in the Bible or like oral storytelling or the Quran. You know what I'm saying? Stony, are you CDN? Oh my god. Trev. Okay, Garfism. Garfism. Amazing. I love Garfism. Hold on. Trev every Trev 0019, everything you say. I'm interpreting it as, as if it's a Ligma or a Candace joke. And I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going crazy. I can't do it anymore. Okay, so let me let me show you the one reason. Well, not the one reason, but but one of the reasons I think Garfism is really cool is because it has a holy site. It was a it was a place at a at a certain time to certain people where something was revealed. In this case. It was the the, la, the lasagna. It was the holy lasagna that had like power 10 and fire aspect 2 on it. And if your Minecraft religion wants something to really ground it, to make it a real religion, you need things like this. Or like Soleanin. Like Soleanin has um, their ritual to the afterlife actually in the lore caused Tessel to sink but also the capital city Lilianen to be destroyed excuse me has a country for every letter except K there's, there's a country in Africa that starts with a Q and an X Um, but, but back to what I was saying if you want your religion in Minecraft to be, like, real, big, then having real events, like this one, the revelation of the lasagna, at a place, helps a ton. The revelation of a lasagna was a major foundational event to the Church of Garfism. According to Garfist tradition, on a hill outside of the town of Greenstem, an orange and black striped pillar appeared, and it, at its top was a gold block supporting an enchanted lasagna of great power. I think it's just this is hilarious. This was called Arbuckle Lasagna. The original peoples there accepted the lasagna and accepted this ground as a hallowed site and is the core to modern Garfus teachings. Things like that. It's it's much better for you to have a like a a real revelation that you went through. Even if you make it up. It doesn't have to be something that literally happens like this. Because this doesn't happen to everybody all the time. But if you make it up, like, who's going to challenge you? <laughs> Actually, I might just be disconnected. I bet a lot of people would challenge you if you make it up. But you could certainly make up some, like another that it happened to another player. And you could base your religion off of that. And you're like the successors of that, new, of that player. I want Minecraft to be real too, James. What language are these gods' names from? I also heard that you were making a video about Bardonia. If that's true, it's hype. Yeah, I am making a video about Bardonia. It's pretty hype in my opinion. But it's also a lot of fucking work. Um, 
another what's another good oh let's talk about gra the pit of gra this was a super early religion basically these guys on an island found a a pit that went down to the void and their religion was just centered around the god of the void he just lived in the void his name was gra and what I really like about this is that one, the void is a real thing in Minecraft. It's it's there. You can see it. It's powerful. It kills people in creative mode. But the void is not a thing that people understand. There's a lot of different things you could say about the void and all of them could or couldn't be true. We genuinely don't know. So it's powerful, mysterious, and... No, that's it. Powerful and mysterious. That's what I think makes Gra an interesting religion. It's dead now because Asharian killed it. Go watch my video on the Turtle Wars if you want to see how. But, like, I don't know. I, I just... It's much easier for a religion to exist in Minecraft if it's tied to something real. Um... There is no stonework server on Bedrock, unfortunately. I wish there were, but that's outside of our scope right now. Um, you can also... So, another one is the Sacralists. Holy crap. If they, cha if they change this... Hold on. Where's Ceronia? Okay, no, I just typed the wrong thing. So, sacralism is cool. It has a lot of different beliefs and a lot of different stories around it. I don't know any of them because I haven't read it. <laughs> um, it's also very, very... No, no, nothing. Um, sacralism is a lot about fire and, like, I think daytime. Um, so, there's a big thing during a sacrifice that when they did a sacrifice with a cool ritual a giant pillar of lava went through the roof up to the build limit with a bedrock beneath it. That's another miracle that made the Sacralist Temple really big. You know what I'm saying? Things that actually happen. Or, like, even you can mythologize historical events in Minecraft. Like, Solanin did. They took their war with Gra and the, Turtle, the Turtleonians, and they gave it a theological twist saying that their god Solaris was trapped in the Gruh pit to the void so they went and they killed the Turtleonians to get Solaris out of it and honestly I've heard that circulate too much for how little people talk about the Turtle Wars you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying all right let's talk talk to chat Garfist Dandalism is the future. I ha I know some Bardonians who would absolutely hate that. How long does it typically take you to typically make a video? Depends on the video. If it's a Minecraft video, oh, it takes a long time. It's a lot of animating to do, a lot of research. What about that sports where the losers were sacrificed? Yeah, that was um Tlachtli, the Mesoamerican ball game. Um... I don't know too much about the sacrificial part of it. I know that it was an honor to be sacrificed, but like he still didn't want to be sacrificed. You know, you know. Um, part of me doubts that like, like for the Aztecs, like the if they were Nahuatl or like like from uh, Tenochtitlan, maybe they wouldn't be sacrificed. Maybe they only sacrificed the. The captured people who they who played the game or they made play the game i don't know just a guess but i don't know <laughs> did uni approve uh garfist dandalism that's interesting i would not have expected that considering that he is the prophet now um speaking of prophets In the Aztec ballgame, the winners were sacrificed, not the losers. I've heard it both ways. I don't know which one's true, though. Like, I feel like the winners being sacrificed is more interesting, but that also makes it a little more dubious. 
because the more interesting thing is the one that gets spread around more. Uh, no. If there was a global system and the Aztec Empire survived, I don't think they would do human sacrifice. Um, I think somebody wouldn't like that. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think the Aztec Empire would survive anyways. Maybe there could be an, an indigenous Mesoamerican Empire, but not the Aztecs. There had been multiple states before the Aztecs, like Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. And um, I forget the guys who were to the west, but they were powerful and the Aztecs didn't like them. I think, I think an empire could survive with sacrifices. It's just not... Yeah, surviving Western culture is, is the issue. <clears throat> I mean, the West destroyed these cultures. But it's not like a, because of sacrifice, you know? It'd be weird to see what modern sacrifices, if they killed animals and things, would look like. I know some places in Arabia, in Arabia still do that. Um, also, maybe like Central Asia? I'm not quite sure. But like a sacrifice isn't killing a thing and then dumping it out. It's killing a thing ritualistically and then eating it with the community, you know? One of the Argos and cults would get started just dot points about our god. I don't think too many people would be happy with human sacrifice today. Yeah, no, I agree with you. <laughs> I don't think that either. Um, especially because war is different today. Like, a, like a, imagine, imagine post World War II, if if a state raided another state, grabbed its people, and then sacrificed them. That's gonna be the best like american disillusion story in the world <laughs> new england goes into new york and sacrifices everyone in the city spain wiped out all the research i need on central american cultures of great fun fuck the spanish empire bro like britain's terrible but spain so much worse I mean, they're both they're both really bad. Never mind. <laughs> Anyways, is there anything else about religions? There were some religions in the U.S. where animals were sacrificed, but I don't know if they exist anymore. Uh, France's colonial policies. I remember they're bad in Africa and in um, Southeast Asia. In the Americas, the French is colonialism in north america french's colonialism wasn't that bad in haiti they enslaved a shit ton of people but they did pay for that spain's treatment of the aztec peoples wasn't too poggers no it was not <laughs> they used football helmets to go into battle read for the f3dn mod for crusader kings i have not played that i have not played crusader kings either because it seems like it has a very high learning curve and honestly i don't have the patience for a lot of video games so I, I can't do that i apologize maybe one day i'll learn a paradox game but i'll have to have some really good patience then barely anything exists of pre-colonial philippines oh that sucks that's the worst i can deal with a genocide happening but not <laughs> cultural genocide The founding fathers as in like america people worship like george washington and shit because that's weird you know don't don't worship people who enslave other people <clears throat> excuse me for paradox games i'd strongly recommend playing multiplayer since it makes things a lot more interesting i'll i would do that if i knew how to play paradox games <laughs> how deep in how deep in should you develop your religion in your story if the civilization that your character is in has become mostly atheist. Sorry if I'm a little late to the show here. Um, however much religion shows in your society, don't like like they don't have to think religious thoughts. But like maybe once a week there should be a communal ritual that everybody goes to. 
and like maybe they go to it but they don't really like believe in it they're just here because everybody else is because it's like a thing everybody does what else are you gonna do when everybody's at the ritual also if like the state or like the culture demands you come to these even if you don't believe in it like you're, you're gonna come <laughs> religions are evil i disagree as saying religions are evil is like saying people are evil because religions is a big thing stony check discord someone else drew kne it's gonna be a cock isn't it it's gonna be a big fat meaty Ooh, no it's not that's dope that's so cool i like the veil i'm i don't exactly see what it is it could be something else but it looks dope this is so cool kentucky I'm, I'm so glad we got some dope-ass artsy-fartsy people in here. New and That's it. I'm putting that away before anybody else gets any ideas. <laughs> Ooh, question here. So in Almendro, my Spanish empire, just united in history, would Almendro use the support of the church or vice versa? Uh, I, I guess that depends. If they have a political alliance with the church, they definitely would uh the spanish empire as long as catholicism is prevalent there then yeah they definitely could um but the church won't unite i mean i i, I guess the church of the region could unite if almendral has like a, a similar belief in all the areas that it conquered Slavery is evil, and it's in the Bible, so yeah, it can be evil. Yeah, but slavery isn't, like, because of the Bible. It's because people don't want to do do work, you know? Like, yeah, the, the Bible projects evil things, but it's religion's just a reflection on the people, you know? And every people has their own, like, standards. Like, I'm not saying none of this stuff is, is evil or bad or wrong. I definitely commend or I, I definitely condemn a lot of things that are in the bible and all religious texts kind of goodbye creaky good luck on your homework thank you i will look up the hawaiian octopus myth <laughs> when you send it to me um but yeah re religion is a reflection of the people and how they live their lives the values that they live them with and what allows them to continue on as a society so it's just as evil as, as you think the people are in your own cultural context. God bless. Mm, Anja. I believe religion is used to explain the unexplained and have rules for a cohesive society. Yep. That makes sense. Uh, the rules for a cohesive society is the lifestyle part. Um, and uh, explain the unexplained. That's the gods and the mythologies part. Mythologies are also so you can justify things. Well, Dylan the Chillin' Villain, it seems like you're the Empire, Almondral, was it? Uh, it seems like more of a confederation. So I'm not sure if the unity would come from cultural heritage shared by the people. I think you would need to ask yourself about the culture of the people beforehand, yeah. Um, I don't know how big this empire is. Is it is it all of New Spain? Unsure. Hawaiian pizza myth. Hawaiian pizza, kind of good. Should be a myth. Bruh, bruh, what a good introduction for religion in the wiki. What's a good introduction for religion in the wiki? Um, I would just write it like a wiki article. Just be like, this is a religion that is practiced here by this people doing this, you know? Say religion that is all evil would have to just, that God is real and determine if they are in fact evil. I kind of disagree cherry gaijin like if i had a cult that that took people and murdered them for sacrifice like random people not necessarily out of war i don't think i need to prove that the gods that i'm worshiping are real to see if they're evil oh wait no i see i see what you're saying yeah if, if you see religion as the god but 
I kind of see it more as how society acts. Yeah. I don't know, but I understand. I, I understand what you mean. <sighs> okay, so contrary to what I just said about having coffee, and I blew out my candle, I am getting tired. Interesting topic either way. Nice to see that somebody did this. I was going to do one as very deep into religious studies and history and writing a huge sci-fi series that has many religions. Very cool. Loose confederation through royal marriages on the brink of becoming an HRE, but with a head family ruler. Dylan the chillin' villain, I would say try to find a way that they could consolidate really quickly. Maybe just one guy takes over and just gets all the political power instantly. Don't know how he would do that. Maybe he just conquers all of it. But who knows? I think this is a, an interesting uh, question that you've posited for yourself. Okay. Well, we've talked a lot about religion and about other things. Uh, we talked a little bit about these bad boys and uh, the Kinei drawings. So dope. Look at these. Yes, thank you, Kentucky. It's so cool. I really like this one the with the veil and like the smoke rising off of it. Absolutely awesome. Okay, time for me to show my real head. Yes. That means that we're in taboo mode and the ritual is complete. All right, I will see you guys later. This has been a fun stream. I hope we do more like this in the future and uh, make some cool ass religions, write some really good stories, have some awesome, fun, entertaining characters. It's gonna be awesome. Tribalism is at the core of Abrahamic religions. Yeah, I'd say so, at least Judaism especially. All right, <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.